Good morning. How are you doing today, fellas? How are you doing today, stream? Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Today we are rocking the Monster Ultra Paradise. Some tropical fruity flavors that I know that I'll enjoy. How are we doing today? Good morning, good morning. What are you guys up to? What are you shunting today? I'm going to be shunting Mill Tank until it reaches 2100 in game time. Then I will make my way over to my gym run. We'll get that taken care of. And we'll probably come back to Mill Tank after that. Or I have something special planned in store that I would like to kind of tackle today. A little bit of a... Uh, I made the spoiler alert for an upcoming video. I recorded... I still have to put music over, clip it up and everything. But I recorded the secret base guide today, and I officially like decked out and made my secret base. Now I'm not super happy with the end result. I'm happy with it, but I think it will be it could be better, and I want to flesh it out more in the future. But I also kind of want to wait until there's more to do in secret bases. I, I really, really would hope that the devs would add more. I think the secret bases are such a cool mechanic that really could be fleshed out a lot more. Um, and we'll get to that in the video and everything like that later. But first things first, good morning. How are we doing? Let's go for some shunting on Miltank. We do have donator status now. Once again, thanks to Rumel. Uh, very gracious donation the other day. So we're able to shiny hunt with Char with Dono uh, and see if we can get a shiny today. We're currently at 18,473 encounters since our last shiny. Nothing crazy. Nothing crazy. Not even dry. Uh, so, But we'll see if we get lucky. We'll see if we get lucky today. Dude, I think I actually forgot about that and missed it. I missed one cent bur- I missed Burger Day. Wasn't it the 18th? I missed National Hamburger Day, Cheeseburger Day, whatever. What a bad American I am. Ugh, unbelievable. We got a big gamba in chat on whether or not, whether or not I get the shiny blue cow today. 1K Lepa says you get the blue cow today. We've got lots of gamblers in chat, fellas. Believers and doubters alike. Will the shiny happen today? Let me see what the points- We've got, we've got 91. Holy, we have a lot of believers today. More believers than I've ever seen. 20K channel points. 87% of the points input are, are believers and say that I will get the shiny today. While only 13% are doubters who think I won't. Believers are strong today. Let's see what happens. That's a good question. I also think that... I think that Minchino is a mouse. Yes, I believe so. So I have four shiny, like, rodents. Maybe maybe more, at least, at least. Because I have two shiny Minchinos, which were fail shinies. And then two shiny Raticates, which were fail shinies. So I have at least four shiny failed rodents. Um, do I have any more in the, in the PC that I'm forgetting? I don't remember. But at least four failed shiny rodents. You thought Minchino was a squirrel? I feel like this is mouse. More mouse-like than squirrel. What do we think, fellas? I feel like this is quite... Oh, it's chinchilla, technically. It actually literally says... Man, it's almost like we have the information at our fingertips and we just still don't use it. Um, yeah, it's technically the chinchilla Pokemon. I feel like that's quite mousy. Quite mousy, if you ask me. If I use a uh, name change ticket, will my OTs change too? Yes, that is a very good question. And yes, they will. If you have like 100 OT shinies or however, if you have any OT shinies and you use a name change ticket, those OTs on those shinies will change as well, which is a huge like relief. You know, that would be really stressful and shitty if you lost all your OT shinies just from a name change in game. Oh, that's a good point though, Kuroshi. If you have any OT stars, if you have any OT stars, they will lose the star and keep the old OT. That's actually really interesting. Now, obviously, OT stars, you know, technically aren't your OT shiny, which is why that, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That's really, really interesting. I was meant to ask, is there an item that can change my Dratini's nature? Your shiny Dratini? Um, no, there's no item to change. There's nature herbs, but those only work for legendaries. Those do not work for any other Pokemon besides the legendary beasts and everything. Um, so you have to rebreed it. You can rebreed. If you already have the shiny Dratini, you can rebreed it. And that is a way to like, you can, you are able to like breed up shinies into um competitive like any shiny you catch you can breed up into a competitive ot shiny if you would so like it's gonna cost you a fair bit of poke in, but you definitely can do it it's one of my favorite parts of shiny hunting in this game is that you can make them all reasonably competitive just cross some poke in. yeah the most common false ban in pokemo i shouldn't say false ban but like the most common ban that i see of people being like fuck i just i really didn't know it was against the rules is that sort of um, using things like blue stacks or, or, or using uh, virtual machines to create multiple instances to play, to multi-log or play different things. Some people, like I know like, uh, I think Mudahar, some ordinary gamer, there's like certain YouTubers, certain people who like are huge fans of always opening their computer in virtual machine instances for like safety security reasons. 
there are certain gamers, certain people who like are huge Linux guys. If you run off of Linux, you can open up a virtual machine to like run Windows in it, it's, you know, et cetera, et cetera. There's so many things like this, right? That the most common accidental ban that I see is people who try to play Pokemon through blue stacks or even just have blue stacks open while playing Pokemon or use virtual machines, et cetera, et cetera. And having those up while playing Pokemon can get you banned. So you have to be very, very careful. Um, that's yeah, the most common accidental rule breaking that I see. 19,000 encounters. Nice, nice, nice. 19,003 exactly. So thank you for the charm, Aben Bag. I super appreciate that, man. Good luck to you on your charm. What are you what are you hunting right now, man? Yeah, this is a good question. This person says they have their Kanto starter, Dendar, and Snorlax. What other Pokemon should he use for a Kanto only? Oh, you have three Kanto starters. So you have five Pokemon. So you need one last Pokemon. So you have the, the three Kanto starters, Stormlight Gengar. You want one more Pokemon for your Kanto storyline playthrough. The immediate thought is Dragonite, but obviously Dragonite's not actually good for like storylines. Since you don't get them until level 55. So you kind of nix that idea out. Um, with that team, Porygon could be interesting, but obviously you don't want to evolve it into Porygon Z and stuff. So that kind of hurts it as well. You could always just go Alakazam. You know, Cloyster is really good as well. Oh, wait. Okay, there's actually so many good options. So for Gen 1 storyline only, I'm looking at... Uh, you could go Starmie. You could go Starmie. Cloyster would be super good. Gyarados. How did I almost forget that? Gyarados. Gyarados, Starmie, Cloyster. Alakazam, like I mentioned. That is probably... Nido King. Those are probably the best best storyline pokemon out of gen one like all those guys yep that'll do it pat do you think pokemon like infernape and volcarona will be outshined by entei and affect gtl prices i'm a new five iv breeder i don't think so i think infernape and volcarona and entei all do wildly different things right like in ou like volcarona is obviously a quiver dance setter that's where it will always be it's where it will always shine is some like it's Volcarona is good because of Quiver Dance. It would be fine without it, but it's like really good because of Quiver Dance on that Pokemon. It's so powerful. The way the stats all line up, it's so good. Quiver Dance is such a powerful move. Uh, Infernape is specifically a mixed attacker. I don't know if Entei is going to... Entei might end up going mixed with like extreme speed, but it might just go full... What's it? It's, it's Entei's most powerful thing is going to be its high burn chance. I think that these are all going to be different Pokemon. Volcarona will be a setup Pokemon uh, that's like hard sweeps. Infernape will be a wall breaker, offering like really good mixed attacks, being able to take care of Chansey slash Bliss plus Starmory, which is like, you know, Starmory, which is why it was invented. Um, and then Entei is going to be a sort of utility burn Pokemon, um, is a huge meme. Utility burn Pokemon. It's going to be, it's going to be to cripple and annoy your opponent's team while also representing a decent threat. Entei is an Arcanine with a better physical fire move. Probably? I don't, I'm not a PvP expert, so I can't say for sure, but that honestly sounds mostly accurate, but we'll see. This is still like a hugely like talked about topic and debated. And I like, it's funny, like how, for how much this discussion or how much people desperately want an answer to this, I have not seen like a single good answer. Um, I have not found any good payday locations in Johto. Johto seems really dog shit for payday, which is like so funny and sad, but also makes sense because people desperately want like a payday location to be able to like hunt Raikou at, a payday location to be able to like uh, do while they uh, farm for payday, pick up rainbow quills. But like, I have not seen like anyone be able to like source a decent, a good payday location. Like, like here is probably your best bet and it's just not that great. Um, it's like a really, yeah, there's just not that great of a, a payday location from what I've seen in Jodo. There are some like okay-ish ones like this, but like I've seen better thief stuff, like thiefing lucky eggs here from Chansey's while popping lures is like one of the better ones I've seen. Even that's like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how much poking that is per hour, but then you want to test. Uh, yeah, using like frisk mons. I hunted Raikou and used Bayonet frisk to get Everstones. Yeah, like frisking and stuff or thiefing seems to be better than uh, payday. Uh, yeah, payday pickup, but I, that's from what I've seen. I don't know. This is actually one of my favorite questions to get in Pokemon because it's a really, really good question. It's really unintuitive and it's not very easy to like Google this question or make a video just quickly explaining the answer to this question. So someone asked me, what's the items that I have in slot number three? So this is my Keybound Sweet Scent. 
So to keybind this, you go to the move, you click this white star, and you select the hotkey. And Sweet Sense just the move that allows you to like summon times five hordes of Pokemon. You can do this over and over again. Eventually, after when you PP max it, you can do six Sweet Sense, and then you have to heal, go to a PC. Or you could consume Lepa Berries. Uh, those are consumed automatically nowadays. If you just keep clicking this button, you don't actually have to have Lepa's key balance nowadays, but it's kind of just fun to flex the stack if you have a big Lepa stack. Um, yeah, that pretty much covers it. Key binding, Sweet Scent. It's pretty unintuitive, like coming to the move of the Pokemon and like, pressing the white star. I feel like it's weird. So it's, it's a good question. What's that second charm? I believe item. Yeah, item magnet. I assume Aben Bag is doing something where he's picking up items or something in some location or payday pickup or whatever um it's pretty good for like payday pickup if you're doing like uh if you're like payday pickup fishing at like dragon spiral uh dragon spiral tower for example i had a magnet charm works pretty dang well there and can increase profits i believe life orb is generally not a good pvm or storyline item just because like taking 10 percent recoil damage per attack is a lot when you're like when the point of a storyline is to do like a shit ton of trainer battles or like it, it, it can be good for like one big fight but if you're doing like the elite four for example like taking 10 percent, even if you only attack each pokemon once right you're taking what 60 percent of your hp from life orb chip so if they essentially if any pokemon gets one other attack against off against you you're probably dead uh which i mean maybe that's good enough like life orb can be good in pvm but it's way more niche and usually used for like boss battles and like really big like pvm challenges versus like, it's not, it's not good for consistent storyline use, essentially. I'd rather use a choice band or a choice star for choice specs um, versus life orb is a very good PvP item because it's way better to take that damage and just get through that one big battle and have that benefit and have that boost versus uh, you don't need, yeah, you don't need to like have your Pokemon stay healthy after a PvP fight. Whoever wins, wins, whether it's by one HP or a thousand HP across a bunch of Pokemon, right? Just wondering what average hours per day is good when shunting. I mean, it's going to be up to... That's a, that's a very, very personal question. That depends on your schedule. It depends on what you're able to do, how much free time. Um, you know, do you have a job? Do you have a family? Or what other... What other I'll be, yeah, like that's a, that is like... A, you just can't compare to other people with, with a question like that. I think it's a very, very... That's a very, very personal question. I will say hardcore full-time shunters which very few people there's very few that exist um but full-time shunters i'd say like 10 hours a day where it becomes like a work thing due to like whatever life circumstances they're able to do that like more power to them it's fucking awesome you know we should encourage that if you're able to do that responsibly and healthily uh 10 hours a day of shunting i think is, is like the hardcore shunters the best in the world um but i think like other than that like if you can hunt one to two hours a day as an average person that's really good in my opinion like if, if you can hunt yeah if you add, if you're like a casual player like one to two hours a day i think is really solid one to three hours maybe if you can try to push that um but how, however much free time you have is going to be wildly dependent on your life your schedule how like your prioritizations like how important is pokemon to you is pokemon your main game is it a side game is it your like main job in life is it like just something to come home and relax to is it like what you do while you're waiting for your kid to fall asleep or like what you do for like one to two hours after putting your kid to sleep at night like this is a wildly you know personal question it just really 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 depends hey pat should i dump my girlfriend to grind more on pokemo no you should get her into pokemo make her grind pokeyen for you and then she can be your pay piggy and then you get more pokeyen bam bam win win or vice versa i don't judge whichever you prefer okay I've said this once, I've said this twice, I've said this a million times. Maybe I'm just a fucking loser, I don't know. I would love marriage in Pokemon. I think it'd be really cute, funny, embrace the role players, let, let it be have let it be fun memes. I think embracing like Maple Story, older MMOs, I think uh this is a weird one. Cyber Monsters was a weird MMO that I played. Like certain older MMOs used to always include marriage. And I thought it was I thought it was cute. There'd be like some cool benefits. Um, you could have like extra XP or something when like you're close by like farming next to each other um, Imagine two bros getting married in Pokemon just for the in-game benefits. I don't know kind of based I think it's cute. I think it's a fun little meme. I don't know. I'm down for it. Yo, good call mist It is a nighttime in game. We'll switch over to Dratini for the time being almost at 20k encounters bog When you get divorced you get a debuff <laughs> Jesus. My biggest complaint about secret bases in Pokemon that I learned about today is that you can only put 24 decorations up. That blew my mind. There are so many cool things to collect for secret bases and so many cool... Why? You also, you can only store 80. Why can you only store 80 decorations and why can you only put up 24? I think both of those should be aggressively increased. 
Um, that those both those numbers seem so low. I assume that's just how it was in the original game. Maybe I'm wrong, but I dude, both of those numbers should be like cranked way up. Like 300 items or something should be storable, storable, and like, yeah. I, I am super demotivated. Yeah, plus you should you should be able to like access your PC. Secret bases are like one of the number one updates I would love to see reworked. Like there's so much cool content, cool stuff that could happen there. Yeah, hatching and like, I'd be able to access the PC and hatch eggs in your secret base would be huge. Um, yeah, there's just no reason to go to the secret base or even like, I feel so limited. I'm so limited when it comes to like, I can't, I can't decorate it the way that I want to because it is so limited, which is really disappointing. I think having like at least like, I wish you could place like a hundred things that would pretty much you'd be able to like place any square and that'd be perfect maybe at least 50 and like be able to store like you should be able to store way more decorations as well that's like a pretty easy i don't know if it's like a storage limitation or like a server issue but man I, that would be that'd be so good like i would really really appreciate that that's so cute i always hatch any dog pokemon at new bark town that's really fucking cute i love that idea that's the funny thing about the secret base is like now that I've decorated it, I don't know if I'll ever go back to it after today. Like there's nothing to do in it, which is really lame, obviously, right? Opinion on shiny Snivy. I really like shiny. I like superior. Superior is probably my favorite grass starter in general. Um, and shiny superior is really underrated in my opinion. From the perspective of a new player, from the perspective of a new player, but should the game developers create, but what? From the perspective of a new player, should the game developers create a new world that is small but should be like a main hub slash plaza i see there isn't like a main hub area um i think you're asking about like what i, I in, in my opinion like asking for more of like a main hub city in my opinion there is a huge main hub city in pokemon which is vermilion city um vermilion city ends up being the hub for a bunch of reasons that i made a, a video and some of that in the past um, Vermilion City ends up being the hub because it's the first region that was added to Pokemon, aka Kanto, as well as the connecting city. Yeah, Vermilion City Channel 1 is, is the hub city. You'll you'll see all the veteran players hanging out there, all the insane shinies, um, all the teams repping their stuff, people PvP battling. It's pretty bustling. I don't think it's like a dead, like it's, there pretty much is a hub city just naturally occurring in the game. I don't think it's good. If you already have a natural hub city, I think creating a different city to purposefully try to become the hub city it just ends up muddling things really really hard i think it's better to just have that naturally formed than to try to force like a hub city in the game i love a coliseum where you can spectate tournaments that's actually a very fucking cool idea i don't know how plausible that is that's actually really interesting now obviously you can all you can already like spectate pvp matches by like going to sign up and like go like going going to um like it's pretty easy if you just go to like tournaments if something was like active, we could go to it and we could spectate matches. It's pretty cool. You can actually spectate active tournament matches or just active uh, ladder matches in general. If we go to like spectate, we can see, we can just watch a fight really quick or whatever. Um, like, it's that fast. How like how fast is that? This is like an 885 random battles, high level as shit tier game. Let's see if he goes for the flinch chance. He's gonna get hit by a rock move. If not, pain split. I don't know, really cool stuff. Um, but like a Coliseum does sound really awesome in my opinion. The only fun secret base thing I've seen is a group of people having a fight club, quote unquote, in a base with people betting on the winner. Yeah, like that's that's a very cool socially community driven creative idea. That's awesome. That's a really cool thing that I often forget X have is that if you have donator status active on it, it's a, an account wide thing. So you can have three characters on one account, have donator status active and then have that donator status affect the other accounts or, or characters rather. So I could go like log off of Petrowski, log into the other characters on this one account and they'll, they'll have the donator status buff as well, which is really interesting. Also 20,000 encounters not a like doesn't really mean anything i'm not any closer to a shiny but we love our big numbers going up pokemon stadium is such a damn good and unique game it's one of those games where like if you have the urge to play pokemon stadium you pretty much can't play anything else to like fill, fulfill that itch you have to play pokemon stadium um you, you can't play like anything you have to play if you have the itch to play that game you have to play that game it's never going to be filled unless you actually like go play the game I feel the same way with SSX Tricky. Like I can play a bunch of other snowboarding games or even other SSX games, but nothing will ever fill that SSX Tricky itch unless I just sit down and play that game, you know?
I feel like there are a lot of games where you can fulfill that itch with other games within the same genre, but I feel like there are certain ones, like, if you want to play a Pokemon game, you may not want to go play specifically Fire Red or specifically Emerald or, like, White and Black or whatever. You can just play some Pokemon game, right? And that'll fulfill your itch. If you want to play some, like, action RPG, like, some dungeon crawler, like, maybe you want to play uh, Diablo, maybe you want to play uh, Path of Exile, maybe you want to play Fate, maybe you want to play, like, there's so many games like Torchlight, uh, Kingdoms of Amular Reckoning, there's so many games like that that exist that like you don't always need one specific game to fulfill that itch but i feel like there are such extremely unique games like ssh tricky and like pokemon stadium that truly can only be fulfilled by that one game's experience what was your first shiny ever not even in pokemon my first shiny ever was a shiny sand slash or i guess technically sand shrew that i bred for specifically in pokemon white i masuda method bred or a shiny sand shrew that was one of my favorite like i really love bike shiny hunting like egg hatching it's kind of why I love bike MMO is what it used to be called. Bike MMO was when everybody would get five eggs, which you uh, used to be able to do, which I mean, you think you can still, yeah, you can still do that now. You couldn't for, for a while. They limited you to only one egg per party for per inventory or whatever, but you would get five eggs. It was, this was, this was before Pokemon were consumed. So before Pokemon were consumed, it was just traditional Pokemon breeding. You would fill up your party, get those five eggs, head over to the bike route in Kanto, that left side, like that links, um, Fuchsia city and Celadon. And you would just bike up and down and you would just see hundreds of players like that was all you like one of the only pieces of end game was just biking up and down um at bike route and that was like it was called bike mmo because one of the main things there was to do in the game was just biking which is really funny but i fucking loved it but it also created so bike mmo had huge issues with botting and not only botting but like you know like putting like a, 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 a soda can like on your keyboard like some dumb shit you know like having it like go back and forth um Yes, that was that was like way more problematic in a game where it was literally just like you, most of the end game was running back and forth and doing steps. Uh, I loved it. Super dumb, but I don't know why it was so methodical and so fun for me. Yeah, there's been so many dog shit breeding systems in Pokemon. I've talked about this a couple of times. Um, and I have a full video of me ranting about this coming up semi, probably not soon, probably like November or something. Um, but the worst update that Pokemon ever got was something called flag breeding, flag system breeding. Um, I'm excited for that video to come out. It's a great piece of Pokemon history. I'm really glad we're past it because that shit was horrid. All right, five seconds or so left in the charm. This is my very last horde. And then we're going to head over and go do our gym rerun while it's nighttime. But first things first, BRB restroom break. How many people know about this? Probably, probably a fair bit. I feel like it was pretty real. Well, because it was actually... It was, it was last year's... I've talked about it a couple times in videos. It was last year's Christmas event, though. So it's probably not nearly as as known nowadays. Um, but this is an old... It's a glitch. There was a glitch for a very short amount of time. Like, I'm talking like the first, like, one to two hours? Maybe first six hours or so? Um, first couple hours of the Christmas event last year, there was a glitch where Pokemon you would get, like, one from the event would be no OT. So it just has no OT. Um, I know a lot about this. Yeah, it's very fucking rare. Yeah, it was like a very, very short-term glitch that existed in the game for a very short amount of time. These can be worth a lot of money. This one's also three times 31. This one's actually insane. This is a three times 31, two times 30, no OT Pokemon. These IVs are fucking insane. Um... I should make it competitive or something. That's, that's kind of a good meme, but I don't know. That's pretty nuts. It's pretty nuts. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. It, keep an eye out for them on the GTL. They pretty rarely pop up. They'll usually be like ice snow themed Pokemon. And they probably usually have hidden ability access, I believe. It was a way to bring in hidden ability access into the game. Um, but they're pretty rare. But keep an eye out for them. All right, gym run. Get it started. Running low on Rich's Charms. Kind of a good thing, though. But once I'm out of Rich's Charms, I'll only be able to sell stuff from my boxes. I still have a bunch of stuff in my boxes to sell, but I did sell off all of the Dex stuff, which is super nice. But I still have. I have. I just have so many boxes of Cranidos still still to sort through from the hunt that I have to like be really careful about sorting through since like I don't want to get rid of uh, people keep bringing it up to me and it's, it's a good call. I don't want to get rid of I don't want to like release any Cranidoses that were hatched or spawned out of fossils on the day I got the shiny like same day. Yeah, same day Cranidoses from the shiny the same date is actually really important. I probably should like give those out to some like my my viewers who like watched a lot of the journey, like stuff like that would be like a cool little 
a cool little, you know, prize or reward. So we'll have to sort really aggressively with, or really carefully with those training doses, rather. I actually super agree with this. And I super like this sentence. German. Potato says, I only like gym, gym running up to 10 mil. Then it kind of feels like you don't make much progress for the time consumed. Yes, absolutely. You reach a level of Pokien where it's much better for you to like flip or like sell stuff or breed for profit or do like do other money making methods that like require a lot of capital, like shiny flipping, for example. Do those methods that require a bunch of capital but have faster and better returns than Jimmy running. Absolutely. You won't get like fast returns on those, like pure Pokien. Like gym, like gym runs are nice. They give that pure cash like instantly, right? But it's still super nice. Like flipping and, and breeding and everything. It's just such, it's such, it's more profit per hour if you do it correctly. Like the question is, would you rather spend, you know, two hours a day? Would you rather spend one hour a day flipping and do like, get like 600K in one hour? Or do you want to do like two hours a day of like gym runs plus something else? Or like, yeah, I think it's just, it's so sick. A lot of people are speculating more and more and more. I think this this sort of idea is being pushed around more and more and more, and it might be accurate. Um, we might see the anniversary event in November, since um, it obviously got delayed so hard from Johto and everything. So we might not end up seeing it until they're not, they haven't really said anything about it on the forums. So it kind of leads me to believe they are delaying it. So it's possible our next event. It's possible I can spend all this time saving Pokemon up until Halloween, which is honestly really nice. But it's possible we don't see. An event until October 31st, and then we will um we'll get the anniversary event in no in, uh, in November, and then the Christmas event in December. Ever. It's weird they don't do the anniversary event on the anniversary. They want to. Um, it's just like the last two years they've just started doing it. They want to aim for that, um, or at least do it around like in the mid year, like July. It's, it seems like they want to do the anniversary event every year around June slash July. Um, but they just sadly haven't been able to hit that, hit that, unfortunately, you know, they're, they're, they're a really small dev team, not to like defend them too much. They still make mistakes by setting deadlines. Well, they haven't set one for anniversary event, which, you know, respect it. Um, but they are, they're a really small dev team, like a really small dev team. Yeah. So this year's anniversary event was delayed specifically due to push, forcing out Johto first and really focusing on Johto. And I mean, all the content when they do release it is so fully fully baked you know like fully complete and fully done and it's just i think that's deserves a lot of love and respect for like especially, especially during the current you know gaming climate um I, I people shit on new games a lot in my opinion unfairly but one of the fairest and truest criticisms is absolutely releasing it releasing a half-baked product and how normalized it's become to release an unfinished game and then patch it later on which is pretty you know worrying right um i think pokemon was really really good about not doing that someone asked me earlier what's the hot take of the day and i kind of gave it already but yeah i think this is a hot one i know i might lose them i'm sorry I, if you are a fan of these games i appreciate you and i love you and i respect you i want to preface i've never finished a final fantasy game i've played final fantasy 7 10 and 13 hilariously 13 is my favorite very linear but the characters and storyline are pretty interesting haven't finished any of them I think Final Fantasy is probably the most overrated game series of all time. I would love to go back and try like Final Fantasy VI and play the 2D ones. I feel like that's maybe more my cup of tea more. I'm not sure. Um, but I I was really, really unimpressed by Final Fantasy, like everyone that I've ever played. And I think and like the, the movie, I watched the, one of the movies as well. Um, probably the most overrated franchise to me. Just my opinion. Please don't brutalize me in the comments too hard. If you're a fan of Final Fantasy, maybe explain to me why you like it so much and I can look to enjoy it in the same way you enjoy it. I think that's kind of a cool way to like appreciate, find a new appreciation for something because someone explains why they like it so much is pretty cool. This is actually a good question. When will you do your next shiny roasting? My initial plan was to do shiny roasting and end the fashion contest once a month, but I think that's actually way too much. I think what I'm going to end up doing is doing both of those maybe once every three months. Well, in like, that'd be like four, maybe like three a year, four a year. I think what happened is, yeah, there's just too much it's just too much. I think it, um, it's, yeah. I think doing one, both of those every three months or every four months is probably going to be ideal. So look for those a lot less. But shiny ratings in fashion contests are definitely still really cool and I, I want to keep doing them. Dude, I love the idea, the idea of a Pokemon New Game Plus. Pokemon New Game Plus should be doubles only story. I think it's an, it's an interesting way to do it. 
I think it's a lot of a lot of really cool text and a lot of really cool things you could do to do like a new game plus in Pokemon. Replayability of the storylines would be such an interesting like mechanic. A lot of people, a lot of people just really like the storylines. I'm not one of those people. I think the post game is way more fun to me, but some people really like the grinding of storylines and just playing through them and having fun and having that nostalgia. And some people want to experience that multiple times on one character. I think that's kind of cool and kind of fun and we should encourage it. All right, there we go. That is the gym run over for today. So we can go back to, well, Miltank's not quite ready to be shunted yet. It's still 3.30. So we're like, a couple more minutes in game we can we can head over to the miltank shunt so i'm gonna just chill for a sec i guess in the meantime we can hatch the rest of those eggs i just randomly decided to i just randomly made some eggs the other day i was just in the mood too so i was like you know what let's go ahead and make some eggs and uh see if we get lucky on an egg shine i don't really recommend doing this i was just kind of in the mood i had the itch to make the to make the eggs so you know why not do it while you have the urge to so we got 10 just two batches or not two batches just two inventories 10 eggs to hatch just a really big, a random assortment of Pokemon, too. Like, just random rares. Well, there's the... It instantly hatched. Uh, Tepig, Porygon, Cherubi, um, Snorlax, Scorpi... Uh, yeah, Scorpio... Scorpi? I don't know why I couldn't remember the name. Beldum. Just a really random assortment of Pokemon. Audino, one Squirtle. What's over here? Like, we've got Aerodactyl, some Aerodactyl eggs. Just a bunch of random stuff I was interested in. I don't know if it's a hot take, but I think Tepig is a good starter and its evolution line doesn't do its justice enough, though. I actually love, like, Tepig, Pignite, and Embor. I actually love all of them. People dick on Pignite. I actually really like Pignite, but maybe I just like, I don't know. I like the fucking look. I think it's a cool little, I don't know. It's like his awkward fucking teen years of being chubby and not quite strong enough yet. And then, oh, it grows up into Embor, big, strong, like fucking king. I don't know. I actually really, really like Tepig. Ignite, but obviously more power to you and getting a lot of people share that opinion so fair enough i love that whole i think it's a really underrated line ah uh, yes we need more firefighting types that's fair i i yeah i mean that's definitely a fair i think that's why embor got so much hate because he was just another firefighting type in a row which is you know not very interesting but the design itself is is pretty cool in my opinion i have this like fucking this is like this is just horseshoe theory this just already exists but i have like this horseshoe theory about like video game veterans so when you're a new player about like in, like in relation to like ego and stuff when you're a new player i feel like you're really humble really hungry to learn you're really excited yada yada right simple stuff when you've been playing the game for like one to two years you feel like you've un you'll understand most things you feel like you know a lot and this could be the case for like any like hobby and passion you are very confident you're very like egotistical very like I've, the most people that I see like be negative towards new players and be like and scoff at new players and be disrespectful are like these one to two year like quote unquote veterans. But then anyone who's played the game for like five years or more like 10 years, whatever, or for any hobby, any passion, any game, these players are like calm, chilled out players who like know how much they don't know about the game. I am like, I've played this game or 6,770 hours. There are multiple aspects of this game that I do not know very much about, or I don't, haven't explored. Battle Frontier, barely touched it. Uh, I've never been like top 100 in PVP. I've never been even over like 700 ELO in PVP. Like there are so many aspects of this game to touch on that I just, I can't possibly know all of them, right? And I, and I know that like, you reach a point where you realize how much you don't know. And that's when it's like, oh shit, you know, like you're humbled, right? But there's like that, one to two year veteran who are like scoffing at new players super rude to them super mean and it's super it's super frustrating but you realize the veteran players realize how important it is to be nice and kind and welcoming to new players it is important there's a, there's a fine line you don't want to just like coddle new players to it to an extent where like you'd like give them free gold or give them free stuff or even like if people ask questions Feel free to link them sources and teach them about the, the, the resources that they can use to find the, that information. Um, that's really important. Uh, you know, teach them to, to be self-sufficient is like really important within the game, right? Um, yeah, I think it's like my little my little theory on just game. I've seen this across many different games. I think the most annoying people to deal with end up being the like one to two year veterans who like think that they're hot stuff. Um, this happens in like every hobby, every passion, every game that I've seen. Just speaking from anecdotal experience, a little fucking meme theory, so keep that in mind. Here, before I forget this, I'm sorry about this as well. This was something I saw with old school RuneScape a lot as well, where players that would learn a mechanic 
that was easy once you learned it, they would say that the activity was easy. So you know this, if you've ever played Old School RuneScape, if you've ever done the boss, Zalra, people would always say, Zalra's really easy. Oh, Zalra's really blah, blah, blah. Zalra's not easy. It's, it's very easy once you learn it and once you develop the skills, but learning Zalra is actually really hard and developing the skills is really hard. Now, obviously there's like third-party plugins, like RuneLine that make it really easy or whatever, but like, like learning Zalra, without the marked tiles and without the mechanics, everything was really, really, really hard for most players um, on the average scale, right? And so many people just tell people it's easy and it would be difficult and they'd be like confused. And it's like, it's something is easy once you learn it. If you have 2K Zalra KC, of course it's easy, but your first 50 KC, your first 100, whatever is really tough. I don't know why there's this like, emotional separation you have to be able to relate to new players or a player learning the information or the activity for the first time it's really important so this is why i hate smash bros okay the real reason i hate it is because i fucking suck at it do you know how embarrassing it is to, to for people to ask me what i do for a living and be like yeah you know i play video games i do youtube like oh wow that's your book want to come play smash with us and i'm like oh no and then i'm like the fucking biggest loser i'm like the first one fucking knocked out of the ring i sit here and i'm like yeah i play video games for a living i try to like be quiet about it and then i get fucking first rounded dude it's so embarrassing it's the worst thing i hate smash because i suck at it so much it's so unintuitive for my brain dude i i i don't like it brawlhalla I actually really like really great fighting game really gr insanely fast pacing love the movement in brawlhalla great game you make the gtl window smaller that's a really good you cannot but that's a really good suggestion i love the idea of being able to like minimize or like do like with all windows i would love the the like more ability to customize our ui that'd be a sick game suggestion all right rumel convinced me since he's the one who gave me the charm anyway I'll, i'm gonna go ahead and pop this charm let's go ahead and get him in let's get him in the link let's invite more team mr members to our link let's say we've got shiny charm two spots open let's do a charm fellas see what happens we're at twenty thousand five hundred. we could get a shiny today it's very possible you know what chad this music is way too quiet for us to shiny hunt for us to get the shiny mill tank the music to get the mill tank too we need probably something more like this am i right chat I think I'm right. Let's go ahead and pop our shiny charm. Good luck to everybody in the link. And let's get fucking rolling. Good luck, everybody. Wait, it's actually perfect. We're starting this hour at pretty much exactly 20,500 encounters. I'm going to try to stay decently efficient and see how many encounters I can get within one hour. Remember that, guys. 20,500 was the start. Blue cheese comes from shiny mill tanks. That actually just makes sense. Entei is happening in 11 days. 11 days until Entei comes out and, and comes into Pokemon for the first time. It's going to be a good meme. I'm honestly the same exact way, Anime Juice. I feel like the only thing I like about shunting is the actual shunt. Whenever I get the Mon, I just box it and move on. I'm the same. That's a better way to be, honestly. That's how I feel. Um, enjoying the journey more than the destination, in my opinion, is a very powerful thing. I think that's like a good thing. Um, it, maybe, you know, there's some arguments here and there, but... I think it's interesting. I can read out my YouTube stats. That's a fun little meme piece of content. So this is my viewers over the last 28 days. I could do all time or the last 28 days, which you guys think is more. Let's do all time, I guess. I think that's kind of interesting. Lifetime viewers. So these are the stats on my lifetime viewers by viewer age. Uh, 2.7, 2.7% of my all time audience is between the ages of 13 to 17, under 18. Um, 42%, 41.9 technically, is 18 to 24. I'm going to round up the percentages. 44% is 25 to 34. So the largest section of my audience is between the ages of 25 and 34. 7.2% of my audience, 7%, 35 to 44. We've got the, we've got three times more than uh, under 18. That's fucking hard. We have, and then 2.6% of my audience is between 45 and 54. We love the boomers. And then 0.6%. Point, this is a funny stat. 0.6% of my audience is 55 to 64. And then 0.8%, a higher percent, is 65 plus. Elderly people, pog. All right, on to the, uh, all right, the dreaded, the dreaded gender ratio. Uh, we've got a quite large male viewer base. <laughs> 96.1%. All right, that's kind of a red flag. Uh 3.5% female. Oh, it's going up. That's good. 
That's so fucking sad. Uh, anyways, uh, unlucky. I'm for the male gaze, okay? I'm for the boys. <laughs> Let's be honest. All right, on to geography stats. The thing I know the least about as an American, which we love to see. Um, I have a lot of New York viewers, which is kind of hilarious. Um, New York viewers, 27,000. What? And then I have a lot of London viewers, 12K. Uh, 8K Los Angeles. Wow, a lot of New York and LA people. Uh, Toronto is pretty high up. 7.4K, Toronto, Pog. A Philippine city is really high up as well. I'm going to butcher this. Quezon City, Quezon, Quezon, apologies. 6K viewers. Sydney, Australia, pretty high. Houston, Texas, pretty high up. Uh, Peru, Lima, Peru. Chicago, pretty high. Melbourne, Australia, Italy. Dallas, Texas. And then uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil. I'm probably butchering names, but that's, wow, that's some pretty cool. Let's spy city. Let's do geography by uh, larger regions. <laughs> you can see my geography education coming in strong. Uh, United States make up 3.2 million out of my 10.2 million total views. Philippines are 500 around. Wow. I get more Philip Philippines viewers than UK. That's kind of pod. United States, 3.2 mil. 31% of my total views. Next up is Philippines at 5.5%. 5.4% is UK. Germany is 4.7K. I guess I shit on the beans on toast and mushy peas enough to wear. Oh, they backed off. Uh, Canada viewers, 4.6%. Brazil, 3.8. I have a pretty large India viewer base as well at 3.3%. Italy, 3%. France, 2.5. Okay, France dealing with the ignorant Americans, Pog. Netherlands, 2%. Australia, Indonesia, Poland, I'm going in order. Poland, Spain, Portugal, Vietnam, Malaysia, Belgium, Greece. I've seen a lot of Greece people in chat be like, yo, what's up? Like, much love. Uh, Mexico, Singapore, Sweden, Argentina, Chile, Peru, Norway. And then it just goes on. Cool stats. Fun stuff. What's my what's my smallest viewer base? Puerto Rico, 0.01%. 13k views still is like pretty, that's honestly powered. It's a good question, Dragoon. Some people like the like battle background and some people don't. I kind of turn it on and off. I think it's a really good like theme kind of change to shake things up. Um, I, I think I prefer it on most of the time, but I will turn it off sometimes. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I can just show you one sec. You go to settings. Is it interface? Do do. Probably not. Always show video, maybe video battle background let's turn it off and it'll just be like a clear like transparent yeah like this i turn this kind of on and off here and there it's kind of fun to shake things up um i prefer it off yeah i i think it, i super get it being able to like see your characters and see people in the background does make it feel like much more like M mmo -y, if that's the word uh which is pretty cool i, I kind of turn it off here and there occasionally anyways Thank you so much today, guys, for watching. That's going to bring us to the end of the Shiny Charm and put us at around four and a half hours stream today. I know... Okay, the shitty part about this stream, we have to reward the doubters. I know. I'm going to be ending stream here. I appreciate you guys watching. Um, doubters, damn you. But you, you are smart. I did not get a Shiny before the stream ended. There you go. There's your points. There's your channel points. As much as I hate to do it, you, you earned it. Thanks for watching, everybody. Make sure to like the stream if you did enjoy it. If it was good background content while you guys hunted today and, you know, grinded to whatever. Dislike if you didn't. That's totally okay. Subscribe to the channel for daily Pokemon videos. I upload every single day, at least one uh, video every single day. Uh, stream Monday through Thursday on YouTube and Twitch at 12 p.m. ET, Monday through Thursday. Discord's links down below. If I ever have internet issues and I just can't go live for whatever reason or if I'm sick or need to call out, whatever updates for my content are always in the discord and if you want to go above and beyond and support the content if my content has helped you out What's enough trexies speaking of the extra support fucking thank you man good stream keep it up proud of you question mark <laughs> proud of you too question mark i appreciate it man if my content's helped you out enough you can do what trexies just did you can drop a paypal donation a venmo donation a youtube membership a twitch prime or a twitch sub twitch subs are huge this month they're cheaper for you it's september and that's pretty much it thanks for watching have a great day I'll see you guys later. Peace. Hey, thank you so much for watching until the very end of the video. Hopefully it was a positive asset on your day in some way. And thank you to everyone's name who's on this list, who is a massive positive asset to my day every single day. I appreciate you all. Thank you for going above and beyond and allowing me to do what I do.